Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. What benefits you talking about, preacher? Food on your table, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, roof over your head. You're in your right mind. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I, I didn't walk in here and I didn't see no casket and I didn't see no dead folk. But I don't know about y'all. I woke up this morning with my mind saved on Jesus and I recognize that it is only by God's grace and God's mercy that I am alive and well on today. And no matter what I got going on in my personal life, I can put that to the side. Come into God's house on Sunday morning. Lift up my hand and give God the praise that is due to him say we're gonna be sailing 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 through the air oh and I win my ship come let my life I'm gonna leave this old world yeah this world of sin and we're gonna sail Sailing through the air, and I win my. Thank you, Lord, I can't leave this world of sin. I know we're gonna sail, sailing through the air. Let the church say Amen. Let the church say Amen again. God is good. How often? And all the time, find somebody close to you and say, neighbor, God loves you, and I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love in two. Look at the other one and say, it's good to see you too. Amen, amen. Amen. Certainly, certainly, certainly. I don't know. I God is good, y'all. He's not just good some of the time, but he's good all of the time. Amen, amen. Anybody on you ain't just got to, somebody said, think back over your life. You ain't got to think back far. Just think back this past week and see how good God has been to you. <laughs> Things that you didn't know how they were going to get worked out, God worked it out on your behalf. Folks setting up traps in your way, they end up falling in the traps that they set up. Let me tell you, you just don't know what kind of God that we serve. While you sleeping at night, God is standing by your bedside protecting you from danger. You just don't know how good God has been to us. Better to us than we could ever think about being to our very, our very own selves. Amen. I'm excited to be here, y'all. I'm excited for a number of reasons. I'm excited, number one, because my God is good. And I have this opportunity this morning to come out and to celebrate him and let him know just how much I love and appreciate him. It ain't about what nobody else think and it ain't about what nobody else say. It's about what God knows about an individual. Ain't that right about it? And I'm glad about another reason. This time last year, we were looking forward to this time this year. This time last year, we think, like, oh, preacher time, just creeping on by, man. It's going to be here after a while. But guess what? We had the door knocking right now, y'all. We look. We had the door knocking. Now, guess what? We about to step on in. God is good. God is good. And I got to ask y'all a question. Are you ready for a ride? Yeah. Are you ready for a ride? Yeah. Are we all in? Yeah. All right. We're going to see about that. We're going to see about that. Amen. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? That was half of y'all. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? All right, you come to the right place. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to begin at verse number 4, and we're going to conclude at verse number 9. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. If you're visiting with us, and I just I almost forgot, if you're watching this via live stream right now, we just want to let you know that you're welcome and you are just as much a part of this service right now as we are. And we pray that if God permits in the coming days that you will stop by and visit us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them. You ain't hear it from me. So come and check it out for yourself. Philippians chapter four, beginning at verse number four. The scripture says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. 
Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And as a result, the God of peace will surpass his all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is commendable. If there is any moral excellence and if there be anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Shall we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer? Oh, wise and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Master. For yet another opportunity that we have to come and feast at the table of your word. Kind Father, now I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay. Hide me behind your glorious cross that no flesh will take any glory in what you ought to have. And at the conclusion of it, Father, we be forever mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor of which you are so worthy of. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that all those that love God say amen. Look at somebody next to you and say, if I can't do anything else, I rejoice. They already sound like they defeated. Found somebody else, look like they got a little excitement about them. Say, if I can't do nothing else, I rejoice. That sound better. If you read about the life of the Apostle Paul, and if you study the experiences and the challenges and the circumstances and his situation, I think you would come to the conclusion that if there was anybody that had reason or cause to complain or worry, it would be Paul. But at the same time, Paul does not worry. Paul is not stressed out. Paul is not upset. Paul writes these words, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Now understand at this time Paul is serving time in prison in Philippi which is in the province of Rome and he's sitting in prison with chains on his hands and feet and while Paul is in prison in this particular predicament he still writes these words rejoice and again I say rejoice. He was in prison because he'd been on his missionary journey and he was traveling to Macedonia and he went over into the province of Philippi. And when he got to Philippi one day, he was in the marketplace and he saw a slave girl who was being used by her masters. And the scripture in Acts says that they used her to bring about much gain. And she had a spirit, a python. She was a psychic and she predicted the future. And when Paul, along with Silas, walked by, they began to cry, these are the men of the most high God. And they followed Paul and they began to heckle Paul and Paul exercised the spirit out of her and it was at that moment that it was clear to her masters that she was of no more use to them. These people became upset with Paul particularly the businessman they were upset and they beat Paul and they drug him through the streets and they put Paul in jail and they charged Paul with subverting the Roman law. When there was a trial, the judge sided on the side of the businessman, undoubtedly because they had handed him a little something under the table. You know, we get a little strange for a piece of change. Am I right about it? So, and, and, and he sided with them and put Paul in jail. With Paul not understanding whether this would lead to his execution or not, Paul does not have a public defender. Paul does not have money to go his bail. But the apostle Paul writes, he puts pen to paper and he writes these words to the congregation at Philippi and says, listen, don't worry about anything. I want you to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Now, doesn't it seem kind of cultural because Paul is in a bad situation. Paul is in a bad predicament. Paul got everything going against him, but yet in the midst of all of that, Paul still challenges and admonishes the people of God to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Some of us got a problem rejoicing when everything going good. 
let alone when you're going through hell in your life. And Paul says, I want you to rejoice. He don't talk about how long he got to serve. He don't talk about the fact that he could lead to his death. The only thing Paul says is rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Beloved, the reason Paul says rejoice again, I believe that every child of God has to go to a place in your relationship with God that you are able to rejoice even when circumstances are not in your favor. I believe that every child of God must, be, must not be controlled and manipulated by what you see, but have greater value in the unseen because you know that God is working behind the scene to change your situation. I believe that when you're facing something that is in opposition to you, this is not the time for you to throw a pity party and send anybody an RSVP. But this is the time for you to stand firmly on your two feet, square your shoulders, and declare that I'm going to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Beloved, when the enemy sends his imps against you as a child of God, you are not worried. You ought not fret. You ought not try to pull your hair out because you know the word of the Lord has already declared that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's going to form, but it ain't going to prosper. And so Paul tells them to rejoice. He says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Listen, it's almost kind of when you, when you see people who claim Christ who are always stressed out, always worrying. Always looking like you're defeated. Why? I get tired of Christians who are always taking you back to their problems. Because you ain't got enough praise to promote you above your perplexities in life. I believe that if you are a child of God, filled with the Spirit of God, I believe that if God is reigning in your life, then no matter what comes your way, you might have a momentary setback. But you recognize that this setback is just another opportunity for God to show up and to show out in my life. So here it is. And as, I, as we're in this room this morning, I don't know, there may be some in this, this room this morning that are anxious. You're anxious because you are awaiting something in your life. Worried about when my season going to come. When things going to turn in my favor. When things going to shift, oh, Lord, this is my exodus. I'm getting ready to come out. You may be worried about what you're facing because you don't know how it's going to turn out. But I came to tell you this morning that the word of the Lord says that you ought to rejoice. I don't care how bad it looks, you ought to rejoice. I don't care how severe it is, you ought to rejoice. I don't care what been declared over it, you ought to rejoice. Rejoice! And again, I say, rejoice. I believe that every believer under the sound of my voice can find an excuse. If I ask you to find an excuse to worry, it'll come easy, wouldn't it? But you are no longer who you used to be. You got to realize that. When you were in the world, you worried about stuff. But now that you are in the kingdom of God, God got your back. God is backing you up. So Paul says, rejoice. Listen, beloved, God, God says you ain't got to spend your life being pulled in different directions. Your faith and hope pulling you this way, in one direction. And then you got your fears and your doubts pulling you in a different direction. So here it is. If you ever worry, you know how worry strangles you. Don't it strangle you when you worry? If you ever worry, you know the side effects. You got neck pains. You got ulcers. Your, your digestive system is all off track. You know, and Paul starts out saying, you don't need to go through any of that. But what you need to do is rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Sounds simple, don't it? I know it's important because Paul says it twice. He says, and again, I say rejoice. Now, let me show you why Paul is sharing this with us. Number one, listen, rejoicing is a discipline and not an emotion dependent upon your circumstance. I say that for all y'all that was sleep. Number one, rejoicing is a discipline and not an emotion dependent upon your circumstance. I say one more time for the Holy Ghost. Rejoicing is a discipline and it's not an emotion dependent upon your circumstance. Rejoicing has to do with how you see things from God's point of view. 
you got to understand that everybody don't know what God is doing in your life and can't help and can't understand what God is doing in your life. But when you got a relationship with God, you can understand the activity of God. Because his activity is not manifested to anybody that's outside the situation, but it's manifested to the one that's going through the trial. And some people can look at your situation and judge you and talk about what they would have did and what they didn't do. But what they don't understand is that God is in the activity. They don't see God working. Folk can't see what God is doing in your life. Tell your neighbor like John Cena, you can't see me. You can't see what, what, what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through my test from, from. From the outside, you can see my stress and my issues that I'm facing. But what you can't see is the unseen presence of God that is working things out. God is working this thing out. And I, I want to know, did anybody here ever had trials in your life? Oh, yeah, that was happening. Have anybody ever had trials in your life? Can I suggest to you this morning that God is working in the midst of your trial? Everybody can see what God is doing when you're struggling in the midst of your sickness and depression. But I'm here to affirm that God is working it out on your behalf. Everybody can see when you've been set back. Anybody ever had setbacks in your life? Trouble on every hand. Well, I'm here to tell you that setbacks and trouble are not to be isolated from the presence of God. I'm not emotionally dependent upon my circumstances. You see, I don't have to have everything going in my favor in order for me to have favor with God. I don't have to have everything going my way. In order for me to have a praise in my mouth. Because this ain't the first time that I've gone through a trial. This ain't the first time that I've experienced a setback in my life. And I've seen God do it before. And I know he can do it. Too many of us, we are emotionally driven. Things go well, we all up in your face. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. But when things aren't going well, you can't get a peep out of us. And that's what upsets the devil. When you can go through all forms of hell in your life and you still got a hallelujah. When you can go through all kinds of trials and tribulations in this life and you're still making your way to the house of God. You're still pressing your way. The devil giving you any and every excuse in the book that you can use not to go, oh, my toe hurt, my back hurt, my neck hurt. It's going to hurt at the house. It might as well hurt in the house of God. Some of us will let any and everything keep us from God. I don't know about y'all. It ain't a mountain high enough. It ain't a valley low enough. Ain't a river wide enough to keep me from God. That's what upsets the enemy. When you can go through it with a praise in your mouth. Folk looking, folk looking how you holding up. She should have been giving up by now. Lord, look at all that she going through. And folk on the outside, as they say, all they can see is what you going through. They don't see the fourth man in the fire that's walking around with you. They don't see the one that's down there keeping your mind in perfect peace. They don't see that. Everything does not have to be in your favor for you to say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not. His wonderful bit of me. My second reason to rejoice is because that which is unseen always counters what is seen and causes me to rejoice. That's why my rejoicing is powerful. It's subversive because if I rejoice long enough, God going to hear my cry after a while. And it frustrates the devil. The devil can't understand a child of God that got a spirit of rejoicing. That's why the devil hates you to rejoice. That's why some folk on your row don't like for you to say amen too loud. It's tight, but it's right. I believe, I believe the enemy sends some folk to the congregation to sit by you and shut you down. Every time you say amen. Every time you stand up, 
What's going on? Looking like you've been sucking on lemons and persimmons all of your life. But guess what? If you knew like I know what God had did in my life, you'd be clapping your head. You'd be standing up on your feet. You'd be saying amen. Glory. Hallelujah. You don't know like I know what God did in my life. So I dare you tell me I can't praise my God. If I don't praise him, I lose my mind. Y'all be saying that boy done went cuckoo for cocoa puff. If I wasn't able to give my God a praise. So the enemy, the enemy sends folk to quiet down our hallelujahs. To drown out our praise. Because he does not like a spirit of rejoicing. But if God has been good to you, I'm talking to you, you here this morning. If God has been good to you and when God has made a way in your life and God has healed you and delivered you, it ain't no demon in hell that can shut you up. And I'll tell anybody, if you don't want to hear no noise, you might as well do like they did in the slave days and put that little finger up and find the nearest exit door and get on out because I'm going to get, I woke up this morning with my mind. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. So I made up my mind. I was going to God's house to praise him. You know, you got to praise God on purpose. You got to wake up. I'm going for the purpose to give God some praise. Lord have mercy, he can't stand it when we rejoice. And so I know many of you in this place as of late have experienced death in your families. I know there have been many people that have experienced many losses in your families and friends and loved ones. And I know you are bothered by the heaviness. That's a natural response. But I want to encourage you this morning. And I want you to understand and I don't, that I don't, I don't want you to cave in to your emotions. Your emotions are not contingent upon your circumstances. Your emotions are dependent upon the word of God. Didn't you hear David when he said that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy was coming in the morning? And, and he did tell somebody, I came to make the devil scratch his head. Confused because he can't figure out why my situation as of yet hasn't been able to bury me. And you know what? The devil knows when exactly to show up. He know, he know exactly when to show up. You know when he show up? He like to show up on a Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon. You just got out of worship service. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Singing praises unto God. And, oh, Lord, you're in that praise of God and giving God a praise. And as soon as you get out of here, you're faced with the devil. You remember when Jesus took Peter and James and John up on the mountaintop and they went up there and they had a mountaintop experience. Here they, they got Peter, James, and John. Peter got so excited. He said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us build three tabernacles. Now, don't, don't be talking about Peter because if you'd have been there, you'd have got so excited, you would have did the same thing. So here it is. Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let us build three tabernacles. And we know the story how God hollers down and said, this is my beloved son of whom I'm well pleased. They had a mountaintop experience. But as soon as they came off the mountain, they had to deal with a demon that had possessed a young boy. Isn't it amazing what kind of glory you can experience at the mountaintop? But the reality is that you can't stay on the mountaintop all of your life and that eventually you got to come off the mountain and you got to deal with the demons that are at the foot of the mountain. It's good over here while you're on the top. But let me tell you, child of God, don't get so used to living on the mountaintop that you don't know how to survive. To many of us, we got it messed up because we think that being a child of God is always about being on the mountaintop. But let me tell you, being a child of God, you're going to experience some valleys in your life. Yeah, every now and then you might wake up in a ditch. Man, how I get here? I don't know, I don't know how, how I ended up here. That's how life goes. Life is full of twists and turns. And as you're on this ride of life, let me tell you, some things you are not going to be prepared for. Am I talking to anybody this morning? 
there's going to be some things, some turns, some twists along this road of life that you're not going to be prepared for. I didn't, I didn't think they was going to leave me this soon. I didn't think that was going to happen to me. I didn't think I was going to have to deal with this. But let me, child of God, even when you feel like you have reached the end of your rope and that you cannot do anything else, you can still tie a knot and say, Lord, I'm holding on. So here it is. It don't make sense to the devil. The devil wants to see the origin of your praise. What do you mean, preacher? He's trying to get to the root and figure out why you got a reason to rejoice. After all you've been through and all the pain that you have endured and how folk can kick you to the curb and throw you under the bus, you can still raise your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, hear me because I'm trying to get in your spirit this morning that you got a reason to rejoice. Yeah, you do. You got a reason to rejoice. You see, rejoicing doesn't mean I've escaped something or that I'm out of something. That's why the song said, don't wait till the battle is over. You can go ahead and shout now. He said, rejoice. I want you to know that rejoicing is a disciplined perspective. It don't mean I'm necessarily, again, out of this. But what I see, I don't like. But I'm looking at it from God's perspective. And while I can't work it out, I know God's got a different twist on this thing. And while I don't even understand, I know that my God got a reason for it all because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, called according to his purpose. That's why Paul said that we can't be anxious. Tell your neighbor, don't be anxious. Uh, yeah, he said instead of worrying about everything, anything and everything. Paul says, pray about everything. He said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And I know folks said, don't take all of that. Every time I see you at that church, every time I look at you, you're talking about God. But they don't understand the reason we do it is because it keeps our mind in perfect peace. The one, and, and like I said, if I didn't talk to God, I'd go cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. If I didn't talk to God, I would lose my mind up in here, up in here, if I wasn't able to talk to God. But I learned from my grandmama a long time ago that just a little talk with Jesus, it'll make it all right. And so he says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And on this side, don't worry about anything, but on this side, Pray about everything. And the peace of God will guide your mind and your spirit in Christ Jesus. Follow me if you will. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Lord Jesus, and the peace of God will guide your mind and your spirit in Christ Jesus. Between anything and everything is prayer. Between anything and everything, there's prayer. And so if I keep on praying, what I'm worried about is eventually going to get turned around. And God's going to give me a resolution. So church, I'm not worried about what I see because I'm praying until God shows up on my behalf. Beloved, God will show you that he's got unlimited options. You never even thought about or considered don't you know that your eyes have not seen? Ears have not heard. Neither has it even entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love the Lord this morning? I, I, I don't believe it. Do you love the Lord this morning? Well, I got good news for you. He got some stuff in store for you. Keep on loving on God. Don't give in. I don't care who leave the church. You don't leave the church. You hold on and you stay in, and eventually God is going to give you your reward. So while you trying to figure it out, stop. That ain't your job. Your job is to go on and rejoice. I know I'm in it, but I know I'm in it, but I'm rejoicing. Because just like I know I'm in it, I'm on my way out of it. There, there's something called purposeful abandonment. And sometimes, beloved, you have to purposely leave stuff alone. 
Sometimes you have to disengage your mental capacity and leave stuff alone. Because the sooner you leave stuff alone, the more room it gives God to work in your life. Rejoice! When I start rejoicing, things eventually going to get better. And when things aren't right, I have to get along with my master and begin to worship him. Because it is only when you spend time alone with God that you are able to truly see the power of God in your life. You're right, Brother John. No man has seen God and lived. But let me tell you something. God will show up in your life and he'll leave enough of his residue on your situation so that when you see the residue, you'll say, hey, God done been up in here. I don't know when he showed up. I don't know when he came, but I know God showed up and he made a way for me. So he says, he said, I, I don't care how sick you are, church. I want to let you know, you still got a reason to rejoice. If you can't open your mouth, you can wave your hand. If you can't say a word, just wave your hand. He said, I don't care how down you are, you still got a reason to rejoice. Because the God I serve is able to reach way down and lift you up. Paul said, look, you got a reason to rejoice. Do I have any rejoicers in the house this morning? Do I have anybody? Don't play with me. God, no. Don't play with me. You need to rejoice. And the enemy is trying to figure out. How can you do that when I set my best strategy against you? When I set my best plan against you? I thought sure you was going to leave the church after I did that. I thought sure that you was going to slack up. I thought sure that you was going to curse God to his face after I did that. And after I got through, after I turned around, you back down on your knees, calling on God. You back in the house of God, singing praises unto his name. And the devil just can't understand. After all of that, how can you still give God a praise? But the devil just don't know. And the scripture says, trouble don't last always. And I can rejoice. Not because I know the expiration date, but because I know there is an expiration. So here it is. Paul says you got a reason. You got a reason to rejoice. You, you've been unemployed, but you're still talking about hallelujah. Friends walked out and left you, but you're still happy about Sunday morning. Lord, have mercy. Lost your job, didn't get the promotion, but you still said, thank you, Lord Jesus. But here I am because God is still good. God says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Don't let what you see discourage you because there is God's divine activity in the midst of God's divinity. In the midst of God's divinity, there is God's activity. I'm almost where you want me to be. But let me tell you why you got a reason to rejoice. Back home in Montgomery, we got what we call the, the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. It's a, it's a stage play, and there are many, many uh, plays that come throughout the year, and they go up on the stage. And I really like to go out there. I like when they did The Lion King and when The Wizard of Oz came through. And one time, they actually had Nettie! See, they had the color purple going on. And I, I just love that. And, and, and you know what? Really, I love, I love the actors, and I love to see them put their all into it. I really love that. But my favorite part about the show is when the lights go off and the curtain comes down. Why is that? Because when the lights go off and the curtain comes down, that means that there's another scene that's about to play. Some of y'all been complaining about the darkness that you are in and when you don't know that God got another scene that's about to show up. That's about to come for Lord have mercy. Some of you are upset and you don't know that God just closed the curtain on your situation because he's going to open the curtain and give you a brand new scene. Somebody holler, Lord, give me something new. Give me something new. What you cannot see is the stage is on a rotational pattern. And once that curtain go down, and once them lights go off, when it comes back up, what was in front of you? Y'all gonna make me preach hard. What was in front of you? 
has now turned around. And when I came to encourage somebody this morning, I, I came to pick you up out of your mess and up out of the darkness that you're in. I came to get you this morning and to let you know that God can turn it around. I'm shouting in advance. I can't see it. I ain't heard nothing about it. But I ain't got no better sense than to believe. It's coming. Tell somebody it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You might not believe it, but it's coming. You can't see it, but it's coming. You, it's on the way. God can change the scene in your life. He can put some things behind you. Some things behind you. Some, some, some troubles behind you. Some bad relationships behind you. Bad connections behind you, behind you. Bad. God can put those things, bad habits. I've been trying to let go of it. Can't seem to let it loose. God can put that, he can put that thing behind you, but you got to first of all, give it up to God. Who am I? You got to first of all, say, Lord, here am I. Lord, I cannot do anything with it. Here am I, your servant, your child. And I realize, Lord, I need you right now. And what you can't see is God can change it. In the old days, in stage production, when the curtain would go down, the lights would go off, they would have stage hands. So you had all these people behind the curtain, and they'd be running over here, getting this and moving over here, going over there and getting this and moving over here. And by the time they get through, the curtain was getting ready to rise. Laying in the stillness of the night, can't even go to sleep because you're afraid of what you got to wake up to. May not be trouble, but it's just the reality of what I got to live with. The reality of what I got to deal with. And in the old days, they had stage hands that would help you, but child of God, can I tell you that even when you feel like you're by yourself, what you can't see is that stage hand. Moving things, setting things up, getting things prepared. You just don't know. You're looking forward to getting there, but God has already been there, organized things, set things up, prepared things for you, so that when you get there, you're prepared, you're ready, you can handle it, because God is not going to let you go into anything that you ain't prepared for. So what you can't see. It's God's divinity, God's hand in the midst of your situation. I'm certain, I'm certain, I'm certain Shaq rat me Shaq and that bad Negro. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure walking up to the fire. Can you, can you imagine? Some of us would have been making up cuss words they ain't never heard before. About to throw us into a fiery furnace. Lord, Lord have mercy. Jesus, help me, Lord. Thrown into a fire. Those that threw you into the fire, consumed by the fire. But yet you are able to not only be thrown in the fire, but to walking around loose in the fire. I'm sure they didn't know. They had faith in God. But they didn't know that there was going to be somebody in there waiting on them let alone a spiritual being, but I, I can see this joker walking around in here. And let me tell you, man, I'm walking around and whew, see some of us, man, is it real? Like, what's it? <laughs> Aston Kutcher about to jump out the fire and say, hi, you got phone. Like, what's going on? Able to walk through it because God was in the midst of it. Can I tell you something? There's nothing that you will go through that God is not in. There is nothing that you will experience that God has not, first of all, filtered for you. So what you can't see, child of God, when you rejoice instead of worry, it's license for God to move on your behalf. It's license for God to move on your behalf. I, 
I still believe that I serve a God that can heal cancer. I still believe that I serve a God that can move your troubles out of the way. I, I still believe that I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think. Good God Almighty, I, 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 I still serve a God that can do anything. And every time I come into the house of God, I want to put the devil on cardiac arrest because God is moving some stuff. You've been looking at it too long. God said, I'm going to put it behind you. Do I have anybody in here that's not ashamed to lift up Jesus? Do I have anybody in here that really loves my Lord? Don't fool me now. I, I got a reason to joy. When I, when I was sick, he healed me. When I was broke, he came in and paid my bills. Second semester, couldn't pay my tuition. Didn't think I was going to graduate. Now I'm graduating on time with honors. You can't tell me. You got a reason, you got a reason, and you got a right to rejoice. This is the day that the Lord have made. I will and be glad in it. I can rejoice even while I'm going through hell. I can rejoice even when my head is held down. I can rejoice even when I'm down, depressed, and feeling dejected. I can still rejoice. Even when I'm stressed out, worried, and complaining about this and about that. I can still find a reason to say thank you, Lord. David said, Lord, I looked to my left and you were not there. I looked to my right and I perceived you not. I looked all around and I could not find you. David finally came to the conclusion. He said, you know what? I'm not going to find God in the north, the south, the east or the west. But I'm going to lift up my eye to the hills from whence it comes my help. My help comes from God. So child of God, you want your help? Stop holding your head down. Lift your head up. In case you didn't know it, you God's child. You ain't got no reason to walk around with your head held down. Feeling sorry for yourself. Woe is me. Why I got to deal with this? Why I got to deal with that? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. So I can face difficulty with a smile. I can face tribulation and trouble with a smile on my face. Because I know that just as it arrived, it got to depart. Well, David, you said we've been laying door for a night, but joy would come in the morning. I sure wish you would have told me how long the night was going to last. You mean to tell me all I got to do is go to bed? And when I wake up, click my heels together three times, and everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all well and good when I wake up in the morning. That ain't what David was saying. And because we take it like that, that's why you get discouraged. Because you don't really understand the scripture. David said, hey, we've been going to endure for a night. So when I wake up in the morning, everything going to be all right. No, that was not what David was saying. Your night might be a year. Anybody in here ever had a year full of nights? Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about here? Seven days of nights or 30 days of nights, three months of night. Every time I start, man, when? I don't even know what the light is no more. When am I going to see the light? When they said it was a light at the end of the tunnel, all I see is tunnel. My third eye, I got tunnel vision, you know. <laughs> All I see is darkness. Trouble on every hand. But in spite, I will rejoice. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for what? For teaching us how to endure. Thank you, Paul. He's in prison, y'all. Chained down. 
he could have written anything that he wanted to write to the people of God. Paul could have wrote to them and said, hey, I need all y'all to gang up. Come down here and get me up out of this prison. That's what I would have wrote to Sweetwater. <laughs> y'all, I'm down here. Cell block A. Come between eight and nine. The guards will be on break. I need you to come get me. Don't tell Brother Coffee. He still got friends. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. He could have written anything that he wanted to write to the people of God. But Paul told him, say, hey, even though I'm in jail, I don't know if this is going to lead to my death. He was not even concerned about that, y'all. He was concerned about the people of God and how they would be after his departure. So he encouraged him. He said, you know what? Don't throw a pity party. I don't want you to be upset for me. If you're going to do anything, pray for me. He said, you know what? I want you to do one thing for me. Rejoice. And again, I say, just in case you forget, I want to tell you again, rejoice. Child of God, I don't know. I don't know. All of us know what it's like in here. You know, you know, you. Some, I think it was Jake said some one time, said, you ain't got to be in prison to be doing time. Some folk doing time on a deadbeat job. Hopeless relationship. Some of us just been doing time. Some of us been coming to church for 30 years feeling like we've been. Feeling like we've been just been just been doing time. Children of God, we got a right and we have a reason to rejoice. Paul says, Paul says, again, I say, rejoice. Just in case while you're going through the midst of your night and you forget what I told you in the beginning, don't forget, I want you to rejoice. Scripture says rejoice when you're able to suffer affliction for the cause of Christ. Rejoice over the fact that that you are even counted worthy to suffer for the cause of Christ. So I want to know how many of us as of today, the next time, I ain't got to say the next time because the truth be told, 95% of the people in here right now, you got your own little trial going on. Amen. And folk can't see. Folk can't understand. Because this is something that you and God got going on. It's a personal thing between you and God. And, and you can't really vocalize it to other people because you're afraid of how they're going to look at you. You're afraid that they wouldn't love you the way that they love you now if they really knew what you had to deal with when you leave 7009 Wilson Boulevard. They love sister and brother so-and-so. But if they knew you and your weakness... They wouldn't be able to appreciate you. Oh, we celebrate David today. Amen. Love to quote David's scripture, don't you? Y'all talk about David like a dog if he was alive today. <laughs> Y'all heard about David last week? Killed Uriah. What did he kill that man for? Took Bathsheba. What? <laughs> Writing letters on David. Got it all over the country. Y'all, oh, don't let David come in your church. Don't, don't fool with David. Oh, that joker Mike can sing, but don't let him get up in your pulpit. You heard about what he did. Thank God they ain't hear about what you did. Oh, for grace, you ain't locked up. Oh, for grace, you ain't dead. Oh, for grace, you weren't carried by the six or judged by the eight. Thank God for grace. Grace, God giving us those things that we do not deserve. We don't deserve this very day. You didn't think, did you really think that you lived to see 2020? It's around the corner, y'all. I, I ain't speaking too soon. It's right around the corner. 2020. Talk about vision, you know, vision. Where I can, I can see. Where do you see yourself at this time next year? 
is my head still going to be held down? Am I still going to be controlled by my situations, by my circumstances? Stop letting your emotions lead you. We're too driven by emotion. Y- your emotions might be over here today. Wind blow too hard, they're over here. Like a, like a, like a ship with no direction. You just toss. Don't, don't know which way to go. As a child of God, you got to <coughs> find you a foundation. Make sure your anchor grips the solid rock. So the storms will come. The winds may blow, the lightning will flash, the breakers will dash, but you will be able to stand. You will be able to hold on. And in the midst of the storm, you can rejoice. In the midst of your tribulation, you can rejoice. So, Lord, I don't know what I got to face on today. I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I don't know what next week. What the next year is going to bring my way. But I know what? I'm going to rejoice. In good times, I'm going to rejoice. Bad times, I'm going to rejoice. Broken pentalist ain't got a penty or a pinto. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. Simply for the reason that God has been good to me. Too many of us will like the nine instead of the one. God do something for you, you forget about him. Something wrong with a blessed child of God that won't bless the one that gave them the blessing. And too many of us will like the nine instead of the one. But Lord, I want to always be like that one. Lord, I don't care what it is. If you bless me, I'm going to tell you thank you. What what, what they used to tell you, sister Reed, if, if somebody give you a bone, take it. Next time they give you a bone with some meat on it. <laughs> rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Children of God, if you're here this morning, you're not a Christian. You find yourself outside of the ark of safety. I want you to know that it is not by accident, nor by mere happenstance that you end up at this place on this morning. God meant for you to be here on this morning. Because God had something that he had in store just for you. Don't don't think that you just stopped up in here by accident. God meant for you to be here on this morning. There's a decision that every person has to make in their life when it comes to their spiritual walk with God, when it comes to salvation. You're going to have to choose whether or not you're going to be on the Lord's side or whether you're going to be on the side of the world. You have to decide at some point in this life whether I'm looking forward to being with God for an eternity or if I'm all right doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, when I'm doing it. And when I die, I'm going to just leave it up to God. You know how he's going to do it. There ain't no way for you to live. As a child of God, do you know that you can live in assurance that your soul is saved? I ain't guessing that I'm saved today. I know that I'm a child of God. I know that I'm saved. I know that my name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And guess what? Ain't now one of y'all got no eraser. Ha ha. Y- y'all ought to be glad about that because truth be told, half of y'all names would have been it. It would have been erased. Salvation, salvation is free, but it came at a mighty high price. It cost our master, our Lord, and our Savior his life, his blood. It cost him pain and agony so that you could have a free gift. Paid a debt he did not owe because we owe debts that we could not pay. And what I like about it, Brother Coffee, he didn't just put a down payment on our sin. He paid the debt in full. Ain't you glad he ain't like us that he just want to pay the past due amount so they didn't cut it off? But he paid it in full. Paid it in full so that you will be able to come to him. So if you're here this morning and you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb, 
I encourage you to come to Jesus on this morning. I encourage you to let go of whatever it is that you feel like is holding you down. Whatever it is that you feel like you can't live without. I can't deal with it. I've had it all of my life. I cannot do it. Only thing you can't do without is God. And anything that you want to do without, but you feel like you can't, give it over to God and let it. But I tell you, I serve a God that'll take the taste of liquor out your mouth if you want to get it out your mouth. He'll take the taste of drugs out your mouth if you want to let them go. He'll take whatever it is that you want to let go of. God will help you to get over it if you want to. But your heart and your mind must first of all be willing for God to move on your behalf and in your life. So if you're here this morning, you're here this morning, you don't know the Lord. You're standing on the outside looking in. Don't be like those folk in Noah time. Wait till the rain come. Wait till the fire come. Oh, you, y'all was for real. This thing is for, Jesus is really here. Oh my God, coming on the horse. Oh my God, like what's going on right now? Like this is real. Too late. Too late. Make up in your mind this morning, if you have not of yet, make Jesus your choice. Make Jesus your choice. If you're here this morning, you're standing outside of the ark of safety, you desire salvation this morning. Come by hearing his word, Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. No such thing as you're saved that you have not yet heard the word of God because it is upon hearing the word of God that faith is culminated in the life of the believer. After hearing the word, you believe the same. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall what? Die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind that produces a change in your action. You didn't just go down a dry devil, come up a wet devil. But there's an actual change that has taken place in your life. And after, after you have repented of your sins, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Not Buddha. Not Muhammad. Not, not one, either one, W. Father, Elijah, Muhammad. None of them. None of them. It's Jesus. And I was talking with a guy the other day. He's a Muslim, and we were looking at the Quran and the Bible. I said, I said, the Quran did get some right. It did get some right. It said that the only man that's coming back is Jesus. Amen. So why don't you believe it? He's on his way back. He's on his way back. We better be ready, y'all. We better be ready. We better be ready. You know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. I was scheduled um, next Saturday. I'll be preaching at the Gulf Coast Lectureship in Meridian, Mississippi, Moss Point, Mississippi. I was scheduled on Saturday night to be the keynote speaker with Brother Herman Wesley, not knowing that I would be speaking at his funeral on yesterday. Your time, my time. Time is winding up. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know where death lies. You don't know around which corner. Let, let me tell you, young and old. Last week, I had to go to one of the funeral of one of my classmates, 23 years old. Drugs. Got in with somebody. They didn't want to give you your money. You got shot up. Now you're dead. 23 years old. Now you're leaving your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, everybody grieving over something that's stupid. Don't make any sense. Let's not lay up for ourselves treasures on this earth where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But let us be laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven where moth nor dust doth corrupt nor thieves break through and steal. Child of God, if you're here today, oh, and I forgot one step. I can't forget this. I can't. Y'all going to talk about me. Y'all, boy, oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm surprised. Ain't nobody hit me in the head. Right? You, 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 you can't forget this right here. After confession, you're willing to be baptized. Not sprinkled. Brother Caulfield, you remember back in the day you used to use burrow cream? You didn't have to put much in there, did you? Just a little dab. It'll do you. Not that way with the water. The very word of baptism means to be immersed, to be submerged in the water. I say it all the time. You don't put half of your body in the shower when you bathe, and I hope not. (laughs) 
you must be immersed in the water. And it is in the water, when you contact the water, God in the spirit does a work in your life while you're in the water. Praise God, our dear sister Ursula on yesterday experienced that for herself. Hallelujah. She experienced that for herself. What the power of God can do in your life. And let me tell you, sister, you ain't seen nothing yet. What God does in there, God does a work in your life. It's just, just like you take a pot or a pan that's dingy and dirty. And you, I don't know about y'all, but I wash dishes. I put a little Clorox in my water and, you know, put a little, you know, you got to get them jokers clean. You know, and put your little, you know, little dish detergent in there. And boy, and you wash it when it comes out sometimes, that joker look brand new. That's what God does. He takes you off of the auction block of sin, washes you up, cleans you up, and makes you brand spanking new. Now, you can be the hog and go right back out there and get back in the mud and wall if you want to. But God has done his job. He's cleaned you up. And even after you get dirty again, now you can come back and say, Daddy, I done got dirty again. And what he'll do, he'll come. And he'll clean you up again. If you're here today and you're already a Christian, you're struggling, you're straining, but you're on your way. Lord, I need you to help me cope. Lord, I need you to help me deal with the things I have going on in my life. Lord, I, I, I'm worried. Lord, I'm stressed out. Lord, I'm having anxiety, depression about this and that. I don't feel like rejoicing. God will give you a reason. And he'll give you the ability to be able to rejoice so my, my brother, my sister, beloved, if you're here today and you are standing in need of salvation, you're standing in need of prayer, you have that opportunity to do that today. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing on tomorrow. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Come now, the spirit and the bride said, come. Come unto Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.